Overview The Art of War, 2003, by Sun Tzu, translated by Lionel Giles and edited by Dallas Galvin, is a classic instructional text on the strategies and tactics of war handed down by Sun Tzu's clan of military strategists and dating to around the 5th century BCE. This edition contains both Giles's 1910 annotated translation and new annotations by Galvin. Waging war must begin with careful consideration of five factors. First is the need for a harmonious relationship between the leader and citizens. The next two are the atmospheric conditions and the characteristics of the land where battles will occur. The remaining factors are the virtues valued by the participants and the organization of the troops. Understanding these factors can help generals reinforce their strengths and take advantage of the opponent's weaknesses. The objective of generals is to win a war quickly without destroying the things they want to seize. A general should primarily aim to prevent the enemy from carrying out its plans and increasing its forces. The size of the enemy's forces, compared to one's own, will determine whether the appropriate action is to surround the enemy, attack, or retreat. Successful leaders do not attack before they have positioned themselves in a way that will practically guarantee victory. Once the opportunity presents itself, good generals strike without hesitation, enabling their troops to overwhelm the enemy. Rapid movement and coordination requires a communication system that can cross great distances. These systems must be scalable, regardless of the size of the commanded force. Troops energized by anger or a hope for reward will be adaptable and organized, representing an overwhelming force. A well-prepared army can manipulate the enemy's weaknesses to force an attack or to avoid conflict. An attack on an undefended position can weaken other positions as the opponent moves resources to defend the target of the attack. Success relies on surprise and secrecy, so that the enemy must make preparations against every possible attack simultaneously. The location a general chooses to attack and the desired effect of that attack can change as the circumstances of the battle change. When ordering troops to move, Generals must keep in mind that the chances of success decrease as the difficulty of the movement increases. Once the general has carefully considered the maneuver, the troops must be swift in carrying it out. These tactics vary with the environment, such as the nearby roads, the terrain, and the coordination of the enemy troops. The general is also a feature of the environment for the troops. Generals can cause defeat through cowardly and reckless decisions. The best place to encamp an army is on high terrain that faces the sun, so that the enemy will have to fight uphill with the sun in their eyes. If the enemy army must cross a river, the best time to attack is when the enemy troops are divided and some soldiers are still crossing. If the enemy's movements seem confident and assertive, its leaders likely feel well prepared. But opponents should always be cautious that the enemy may attempt subterfuge. Signs of stress on the soldiers reflect the morale of the entire army. The most important features of an area of land are who occupies it and how accessible it is. Depending on the value of the land and how difficult it is to possess, the best strategy may be passing through it, plundering it for resources or staying within it to fight. A general who wants to avoid insubordination or disorganization must value each soldier while remaining an authoritative presence. Knowing one's own troops, as well as the enemies, is essential to victory. An army fights best when it believes that the only alternative is death. Fire is commonly used as a weapon. An army can burn its enemy's camp, stores, baggage, or weaponry. The objective is to create chaos among enemy troops. Spies can be local residents, enemy officers, or camp infiltrators. Identifying the enemy's most vital actors is any spy's essential purpose. They can also deliver fake intelligence to the enemy. Spies might help end a war, by giving their employers specific targets to attack. Sun Tzu's teachings have been used by war strategists for centuries, including Napoleon Bonaparte, Mao Zedong, and George Patton. While interpretations of the individual points vary, this text has survived for centuries as a source of insight into essential truths of military strategy. Key Insights 1. A wise general makes preparations to assure success before attacking. It is best for generals to know themselves as well as the enemy. 2. Ending a war quickly is crucial to minimizing the costs of war. 3. Generals are at their strongest when ordering troops to prevent the enemy from enacting its plans. 
They are weakest when besieging cities, particularly cities guarded by walls. 4. Good generals reinforce their own position early against all possible attacks. They attack the vulnerabilities that the enemy leaves unguarded. 5. A general should preserve the army's energy, then release it at the right moment. If the army acts on an opportunity without hesitation, its force will be overwhelming. 6. By acting in unpredictable ways that constantly shift the battle, a general can prevent the enemy's attack. 7. The chances of success decrease when an army is forced to move too far or too fast to be well-rested and prepared. 8. A general should be prepared to change tactics and take advantage of any good opportunity when it appears, even in the midst of a fight. 9. Armies should travel and camp on stable, elevated ground. They should watch for signs that the enemy is moving or camping, such as birds taking flight or dust clouds rising. 10. Generals must treat soldiers with respect and appreciation, but punish infractions severely, quickly, and with certainty. 11. It is important to vary tactics depending on whether the land is difficult to access, whether it is occupied or can be contested by someone else, and whether it has a tactical advantage for its possessor. 12. An army can use fire as a weapon to generate confusion in the enemy's camp. 13. Spies can make wars shorter by retrieving information or sowing misinformation. Important People Sun Tzu, 544-496 BCE, was a military strategist in the Eastern Chao Dynasty of ancient China. Lionel Giles, 1875-1958, was a sinologist who published the first annotated English translation of The Art of War in 1910. Dallas Galvin is a journalist who covers international military affairs. Author's Style the art of war has been studied for generations and translated into English by many people with varying levels of competency and commitment to authenticity. Galvin writes that Giles's translation is the first by a scholar of Chinese culture and language. In this translation, the guidance is delivered in pronouncements and divided into chapters by topic. The pronouncements generally build to a conclusion that explains what action to take in a given scenario. Although the text has been referenced by writers in a wide variety of fields, and the pronouncements can be interpreted to apply to other subjects including business and politics, Sun Tzu's focus is on fighting battles. Accompanying the translated text is a second version, which includes annotations written by both Giles and Galvin. Giles' annotations reference the Chinese scholars who interpreted Sun Tzu's work between the years 100 and 1279. The annotations also include examples of more recent military leaders who have made use of Sun Tzu's teachings. Annotations by Galvin are signed with her initials and provide updated scholarship, military examples, and cultural context including film references. This edition contains a brief biography of Sun Tzu, a timeline of Chinese history around the time of Sun Tzu's life, Galvin's introduction to an historic overview of the text, and Giles' preface. Galvin adds an annotated list of books about Chinese history, other translations of the art of war, books about war strategy, websites that discuss strategy and apply Sun Tzu's teaching to other areas, and movies that reference the art of war or reflect the world of Sun Tzu. Author's Perspective Sun Tzu was a military strategist in ancient China who served the king of the Wu state. Historians believe that he belonged to a clan of military experts who passed their knowledge down orally, and he recorded that knowledge in the art of war. Lionel Giles was a scholar of Chinese culture and history at the British Museum. Giles published his translation of the art of war in 1910, in part to correct what he considered to be inaccurate and inauthentic translations from previous sources. Dallas Galvin is a freelance journalist who has covered a variety of topics, including celebrity life, wine, translation, and international affairs. Intended Audience Sun Tzu wrote The Art of War for warrior scholars of his time. This audience would have received instruction on how to interpret the text when they studied The Art of War. This edition does not attempt to update the content of the book for modern audiences, except for occasional references to popular culture in Galvin's annotations. While Sun Tzu's advice and the analysis of the contributors focuses on war strategy, particularly in ancient times, the book is frequently referenced as a guide to strategy in many fields, especially business.
This has been InstaRead on Sun Tzu's The Art of War, narrated by Sam Scholl. Copyright 2017 by InstaRead. Production Copyright 2017 by InstaRead.